And recently, I have bumped into a lot of assumptions, things that I have in my head, things that other people don't have in their heads, things that I thought groups of people knew and they did not know. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about uh, how do we sort of transplant that context? How do we move mental models from like one person to another person, group of people to many people? Uh, of course, one of those is coming to these brown bag sessions, but uh, it got me thinking and I did some research and I wanna be clear that I'm a tourist. This is the equivalent of like vacation photos, intellectual vacation photos. I'm not an expert in uh, pedagogy, uh, but I, I will do my best to try to explain uh, what I've bumped into over the last couple of weeks. Um, so to start, uh, I, made, um, I made this motion. That's me. They imagine heads. I'm putting a mental model uh, in each head there. Like what, what is a mental model? Well, we all either consciously or unconsciously make mental models uh, to allow us to interact with the world. Um, whether you're aware of it or not, you, you see something happen, you get stimulus and response, you observe uh, a skill or a craft and you, you internalize that. So then in the future, you can uh, do it more quickly. Uh, if I touch the stove and I burn myself, I now know stove hot, I have a mental model, I don't have to touch the stove again, I know immediately uh, without having to experiment, experiment uh, how, how stove works. Um, so uh, as amateurs, and beginners, uh, if you're like me, you start with sort of instructions, with documentation, with facts, uh, but those are not mental models. Those are what they are. Those are instructions. So an example that I thought was pretty cool was, have you ever made more than one Ikea thing in a row? I once had to make four bar stools in one afternoon. Um, so the first one was arduous. I had the instructions and I, had to check the, you know, do I have the tools to have the pieces? Which piece goes where? How does it happen? Let's look at the instruction again. Uh, but after that first one, I had started to put together a mental model. And by the fourth one, it was like jazz. I was flying. I was like, I don't need to do it in order. I just know this goes here, this goes there, bingo, bango, bar stools. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, um, where was I going? Okay, so IKEA, <laughs> bar stools. So how, how does one accelerate the adoption of those mental models? Uh, you know, ideally, I wouldn't have to read the instructions at all. I could just hit the ground running. And I'm sure there's somebody at like TaskRabbit somewhere that's like an IKEA expert. So uh, the places did some research on how to accelerate skill adoption. So this curve is <laughs> kind of sad, but also kind of encouraging because you can see there's a very slow ramp from initiate to apprentice to junior journeyman. But once, once one crosses that point, and what is that, 10 years? I've been a manager for about eight, so I'm almost good at it. Uh, once you cross that journeyman, you, you can see the skill just straight up. So, and, and you know why that is? That's because at that journeyman level, one has a mental model of the problem space they're working in. So the military, Obviously, they want more effective soldiers uh, in all, you know, uh, battlefields and in offices and everywhere. They want to be more efficient, more effective. They want to be able to train faster, be better, faster. Um, so what did they do? Well, glad you asked. They found that active learning and simulations was the key to, like that gesture I was making, uh, transplanting mental models, sharing mental models. You don't teach the facts and figures and the documentation. You just cut straight to the model. And they did that by identifying experts. So you figure out the best salesperson, the best debugger, the best uh, bomb sniffer. Uh, you create case studies from their experience. And these case studies vary from the mundane, like how do I debug this thing, to the heroic, how to deal with a catastrophic incident. Uh, and then from those libraries of case studies, you then create simulations. And in our use case, a simulation might be like a sales role play, or a code lab, you know, an actual sort of step-by-step -step building something in code, or uh, teachers love video games. Uh, the Army created a simulation. It was a first-person uh, sort of exploratory thing that enabled them to live the experience in a safe environment uh, and get that mental model faster. So, pretty cool. 
All we have to do is identify experts at ActiveCampaign, create case studies, create those libraries, and create simulations. Piece of cake. And then we'll be able to share these mental models and we'll all be more effective and ActiveCampaign will be the most successful company ever. But you're saying, well, I don't have time. I don't want to wait for a multi-year initiative. Well, never say never, because I'm sure there'll be an AC university at some point in the future. But for now, uh, what I did discover is one, one quick trick that can help you to uh, share those mental models. Of course, active learning, simulations, all that, high bandwidth. Low bandwidth, though, is good old-fashioned discussion. Uh, discussion, one-on-one, -on -one, was slightly better than class learning. So how do you do it? Well, as you are trying to convey a mental model a concept to somebody, uh, bear in mind uh, that there are two sort of ends of the communication spectrum. You can, as the speaker, as the teacher, start with assuming nothing. So if I were to teach someone programming and I was on the far end of the spectrum assuming nothing, I would say, okay, how do you plug in a computer? Okay, how do you open your laptop? Okay, how do you turn on the computer? and so on and so forth until we got to the actual skill at hand. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, assume everything, start from the top. So as the teacher, as the speaker, I put the onus on the learner, on the listener, and I say, stop me if you have any questions. I'm going to assume you know everything up until the skill I'm trying to explain to you. So in that case, the burden is on the listener to say, hey, hey, I don't understand that. So I would start from, okay, we open up our IDE in our terminal and we're typing this and we have the JVM ready to go. Um, and in that case, the listener would say, whoa, 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 what's a JVM? Hold on, <laughs> what's an IDE? And you would work down to the level of skill. So uh, this isn't a panacea, but as you try to convey a, a skill to someone else, a, a mental model, uh, I would encourage you to keep this in mind. Uh, assume nothing, that's probably not realistic. Assume everything, that's not realistic, but set the rules of engagement and decide where you're gonna meet in the middle if you're trying to teach somebody something. Anyway, I have references. Like I said, I'm just a tourist in this domain. So I will share those references and they're available linked from the brown bag place. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'm sure you're all great at knowledge transfer now.